to ready and go. So in this one, you've got the largest equilateral triangle drawn inside a circle. And in the space that's left of this segment here, you've again got the largest equilateral triangle that will fit into there. And it says, what's the ratio of the side of the large one to the small one? And it's unfortunate that's not the other way around. Because if it was the other way around, so that apex was actually in the circumference, the answer would be easy. It'd have to be three to one. Because you know that the center of the circle must lie at the centroid of that triangle because it's completely symmetrical. So that if you were to draw this median in, which should have hit here, which is also an altitude, which is also an angle bisector, the ratio of that which should be 2 to 1. Simply because if you were to draw all three in, you've got three congruent triangles, and this one's been split now. And with that one being split, that means that that 60 becomes 30. So you've got a right angle triangle, which is 60, 30. So it goes 1, 2, root 3. And if that triangle had been the other way around, there's space for another 1 there. So the answer would have been 3 to 1. But it's not. It's this way around. So, what? Well, now I know the length of that side. I suppose I haven't drawn that. If that's root 3, then double that must be 2 root 3. So the length of this side is 2 root 3. What's the length of this side? And you've got the ratio. We'll call that x. Right, how can we get that then? Need a triangle. Well, usually if you want a triangle, you draw the radius in somewhere appropriate, and that would be to draw it from there to there. If I put that line in, that must be the radius, so that's also two. Here I've got two sides. I just want to know the third, and I know this angle. Alternate angles here. If that's 60, that's 60. So I've got 150 degrees. So I'll take this triangle here and figure out what x is. Well, as soon as you draw that, you think, well, that's a cosine rule, isn't it, here? So I'll just write that out. So 2 squared, side opposite the angle, will be, I'll take this one first, x squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times x times 1 times the cosine of 150. Well, what's the cosine of 150? Well, whichever way you happen to do it. The cosine of 150 is going to be negative for a start because it's beyond 90, and it's 30 back from there is the same as the negative of the cosine of 30. And the cosine of 30 isn't a half, because sine 30 has got that, so that must be root 3 upon 2. So what's that? 4 equals x squared plus 1 minus 2x times root 3 upon 2. And there's a wee quadratic equation. We'll just write that out. x squared. And of course that was minus. So that makes that a plus. Because that negative goes with that one. Plus root 3x. But unfortunately minus 3. Don't know why I said unfortunately. Equals 0. Now you could complete the square. But that just leads to the quadratic formula anyway. So I'll just use the quadratic formula. Right. x equals... Negative of b, so that's negative root 3. Plus or minus, well, there's no point in having the minus, so I'll just stick with the plus, because I know that x is a positive amount. All over 2 times a, so over 2. Then that's but b squared, so that's 3. Minus 4ac, but that's negative, so again, that goes to a plus. And 4 threes are 12, so that's root 15. So you've got this, you've got root 15 minus root 3 upon 2. So the ratio of the sides are the ratio of this, to that. I think I'll just take out that root 3 in fact. Taking out the root 3 leaves a root 5 minus 1. I'll put the 2 under that. So that's the value of x. So the ratio would be this to that. But notice all the answers are something to 1. So I'll need to divide this bit out. So I need to do this. I need to do that divided by root 3 upon 2 times root 5 minus 1 to 1. That's what I need to work out. Well, the root 3's cancel, the 2 pops on top, so that's the same as a 4. So I've got 4 over root 5 minus 1. You just got to rationalise that denominator. I'll not spell it all out. You multiply the top and the bottom, numerator and denominator, by the conjugate that forms the difference of two squares, which is root 5 plus 1. So I'll have 4 times root 5 plus 1. And of course, in forming the difference of two squares, 
it'll be root 5 squared, which is 5, take away 1 squared, which is 1. That's 4, that cancels out that 4. So there's the answer, root 5 plus 1 to 1. So that's answer A.